faithful God. You are the ever living God. You are the one true God. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There's no one like you, O oh God. Man so true, man so pure, man so holy. So we worship you this morning. We give you thanks this morning. We give you all the praise this morning. O oh God, we give you our lives this morning. Lord, oh God, we give you our country this morning. We give you our world this morning. We say, Lord, have your way, not, not our way, not our will, but your will be done. Your will be done, oh God. Lord, we worship you, God. We just lift up your name. We lift up the name of the Holy Child, Jesus Christ. We thank you so much for your love. We thank you for your mercy and your grace, oh God. Thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you for your precious word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit of God. The Spirit of the living God, we pray this morning. That you breathe life into the word this morning. That you touch lives this morning. That you meet every person of God at every point of me this morning. The Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Restore your people, O God. Restore your people. O Lord, and find comfort and rest in you, O God. For it is you, O God, who leads us, O Lord, besides the still waters. You restore our souls, O God. I thank you this morning that there is a rest for the people of God. And that rest in is found in none other than Christ Jesus, your Son. So we worship you. We adore you. We praise you. We exalt you. We lift up your name in this place. In the name of Jesus. Every child of the Most High God said aloud, Amen, Amen. Yes. 
in verse number 13, picking up from there, the preceding verses we find the sower sowed seed on. There were four types of ground. The first ground was the wayside. Someone say the wayside. And the second ground was the stony ground. Someone say stony ground. The third was among the thorns. Someone say among the thorns. And the fourth and last type was the good ground. So there are four types of ground. And that is, that's indicative of the heart. The heart of man. And in verse number 13, Jesus says to his disciples, he says, Do you not understand this parable? How then do you understand all, par all parables? The sower sows the word. The sower sows the word. And these are the ones by the wayside. These are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. So Satan comes to steal the word lest they should believe and be saved. Because Satan understands the power of belief. There's power in believing. What you believe makes all the difference to your life. That's why Isaiah the prophet asks the question. He says, whose report will you believe? Are you going to believe the media? You know they are ready for, you know, especially when it comes to the press and the media and it comes to the body of Christ. They always label and tag any minister who will preach a word of faith to God's people. They call them faith preachers. Well, that is what we preach. We are people of faith. What else are we expected to preach? We do not preach what the media tells us to preach. We preach what the word of God declares. His word is faith. His word says the just shall live by faith. We are justified by the blood of the Lamb, Christ Jesus, and we will preach, we will preach the word of faith because it is faith that heals. It is faith that draws. It is faith that makes hope. Can you say amen to God? You find time after time after time after time. Jesus, when he meets with the sick, he says, Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith. Amen. M A I T H. That is what we preach. And if you're listening to me, if you're watching me, I want to tell you something. If your pastor is not preaching a word of faith to you, or preaching a word of fear, look for another church. Jesus came. He came that we might have life. And the life we receive is through faith in Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's only a poor and a weak, and a weak church that is afraid of the devil. We do not fear Satan. The Bible says we trample on serpents and scorpions. The Bible says we crush his head under our heel. We crush that serpent of old. We crush all of his lies. Hallelujah. Amen. Satan comes to steal the word because he knows that no matter what you believe is what you become. If you believe you're going to die, you're going to die. If you believe you will always be poor, you will always be poor. It's what you believe. If you believe that you are a failure, you will be a failure. The word of God does not declare that you are weak. The word of God does not say that you are a failure. Come on somebody. The word of God says, 
we are more than conquerors. Can you see that with me? I am more than a conqueror. I can do all these through Christ who gives me strength. Yes. <laughs> 
and virtues in you. That after the tribulation or the time of testing has come to pass, after all that, you may now have hope. You will have hope in God. A steadfast hope. To put it another way, you have confidence in God. You have confidence in God and you have confidence in His Word. That through your time on this earth, through your time in life, as you face challenges and challenges come your way, you are able with boldness and confidence to say, the same God who delivered me then is the same God who is delivering me now. Are you hearing me, someone? I mean, I just, look, consider Moses. When Moses was in the desert and they went through hardships, the time, there was a time when people were hungry, there was a time when people were thirsty, all those times. Of the Lord, they are full of sap. You're full of truth. 
truth. The battle not only to make the winds may blow, the storms and the winds of life may blow. They may blow, but they'll never break your bow. They may blow, but you'll still be standing. The Bible says a righteous man may fall seven times, but he'll rise again. I'm here to tell you that the church will rise again. I'm here to tell you that you will rise again. I'm here to tell you that people are not worried about your children. Your children are not grow from them. They are God's problem. But you're telling me somebody. Don't make it your problem. Make it a God problem. Because when it's a God problem, then God will deal with the problem.
You become fruitful in what you've allowed to be sown in the soil of your heart. Your heart is the ground. But once you become entangled with the laws, the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for all other things, all those things choke the word. So the word is no longer fruitful to you. Remember, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. You were sitting on a hill that cannot be hid. He says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, what do they do with it? They throw it to be trampled underfoot. So you see, once you allow everything else to enter your heart and no longer the word, the word is choked. And then you become a mat that you find the enemy wipes his feet under. Jesus of the world. You know, you know what I've been thinking recently? I think I shared it in one of the messages that I sent out. It's fair and well. You may say, I have a huge mansion. I have many mansions, many homes. Oh, no. 
byproducts. Those are bonuses. Those are benefits. Be rich. Listen. When you, listen. Read the scriptures. The Bible says God is love. So He's rich in love. God is rich in mercy. to be rich in the things of the Spirit, in the things of God. We should aspire to be rich in the things of the Kingdom. Because when you reach the things of the Kingdom, other things will just come to you. Since the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, Riches are very deceitful. Oh Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. The scripture that I shared with you at the top of the rich man is found in Luke's Gospel, chapter 12. But I want to read to you verse number, number 13 to verse 15. There, one of the people from the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, Tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. This is sort the of folk who are, you know, your siblings have done you in. You have any folk? You know, I'm not, I have inheritance. Uh, our parents have everything to us, but you know, my brother or my sister done me in, or my auntie done me in, or my uncle or my cousin, but somebody done me in. This is for those. Jesus said to him, man, who may be a judge or an arbitrator over you? And Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. You know, during this pandemic, I've had an opportunity to minister to people who've lost their employment. To minister to people who've lost their income. Secular employment. I'm also in secular employment. I also go to work. I also have a job. And at work, we too have suffered that. Loss of income. We've had to lose almost 50% of our income. And I know that there are many that look insane, but I've got so many things to pay for and so many bills and so many things to do. What does this little way to do? And God says, do not be deceived. That's the deceitfulness of riches. Because you're looking at your pay scale. And you're allowing your pay scale to dictate to you what you can and cannot have in life. God says, He is Jehovah Jireh. He is the God who provides. Come on, somebody. He is the God who provides. Don't look to men. When the people were hungry, Moses did not look to any institution. Moses didn't say, let's go look for a job. Did Moses say, let's go look for a job? He didn't say that. Moses looked to the Lord. And that's my word to you. Look to the Lord. Those who hope and trust in the Lord will not be put to shame. That's the word of God. That's a guarantee. You'll never be disappointed as long as you look to God. Come on, if God can use the ravens to feed a prophet at the root, God can use the ravens again to feed. Amen. Listen, God is a supernatural God.
creditors came and wanted to take her entire family captive. And she came to the prophet and said, My husband is dead. And yet the creditors have come. The prophet says to her, What do you have in your house? She said, Only a jar of oil. He says, Go and borrow jars and barrels from your neighbors and start filling them. Sell the oil and live off the rest. She went, she borrowed jars from the whole village. And after having filled all of them, she still says, Is there any left? And the children say, No, there's none left. And it was enough for her to pay the debts and still have some to live with. That's how God works. He'll give you so much. So much. That you be able to. You have plenty in store and so much more to give away and to share. So, amen. 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 Hallelujah. The deceitfulness of riches, do not let riches deceive you. Money does not make you. Wealth does not make you. I'm yet to see any human being that money has made. If money made individuals, the banks would have been producing human beings. Are the volumes. Now oh, come on, somebody. They will be producing human beings because they have more human beings getting money to bring more money. Money never, money never produced anybody. <laughs> money never made anybody. Money never created anybody. There's only one who created it. And his name is Jesus. All things were created by him and for him. Hallelujah! Amen. So all those things choke the word, but these are the ones sown on good ground. The ones sown on good ground are those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit. Some 30 fold, some 60 fold. And some a hundredfold. The question is, where are you positioned this morning? Where are you positioned today? How's your heart today? Is your heart in the world or is your heart in the things of God? It's you know it is scandalous. And it's a shame. How many even prior to the pandemic, I'm not speaking pandemic, I'm speaking prior to the pandemic, prior, prior to this um, COVID-19 corona story, prior to this, how many you'd find them on the day they're supposed to be in the house of God, you find them in their droves in the supermarkets, you find them in their droves in the shops, at the malls, at the cinemas, in their droves. They never ever late for work, but they late for church. They never ever skip work, but they skip church. I'm speaking post. I was sorry, pre pandemic pre-pandemic, before the pandemic, before Corona. You found it all over. But you were everything else. And neglecting the house of God. Neglecting the spiritual life. And even when this thing came to light, and they closed up the churches, many churches were closed, and everywhere was closed. We found people even, you know, posting remarks of why I don't have to sow, I don't have to pay my tithe. Let me tell you, when it comes to your offerings and your tithes, that is between you and God, that is your worship. Your worship is not on people out there. Oh, Jesus. Listen, it is accepted, the Bible says, that each one gives as he purposes in his heart. As he gives. You know what's the most shameful thing? Is that we have ministers trying to manipulate people to sow.
sow the tithes and offerings so they don't get corona. Listen, if you are truly anointed, you will not manipulate people to get money. The anointing attracts wealth. You don't have to go big and stick it out of people. It doesn't matter whether you rich, whether you poor. You give as your purpose in your heart. The Bible says it is acceptable according to the heart. If it's 50 cents, give the 50 cents. God will work with the 50 cents. I mean, we cannot, I'm even speaking to many ministers. Do not make a distinction in the church between the rich and the poor people. In, in, in the eyes of God, we are all equal. Whether you rich, whether you poor. Yes, Jesus was there in the treasury. And he saw what the people were giving. And he said, yes, the rich bees have given of their of, you know, of their abundance, but this woman out of her poverty has given her all. You don't know where that person is giving their all. You don't know where is that person lost. How dare you? How dare you? In the eyes of God, we are all evil. I'm speaking to churches. Let us get to the place where we have other churches, where we split on other churches. It's shameful when people hear that churches are closing and people start rejoicing. I have a church for the church. Listen, the gospel needs to be preached. Those people can reach an audience that you can't reach, that I can't reach. We need to help. We need to strengthen. We need to compliment. We know we are not in a competition. Thank you. 
for a job. Father God, that Lord will speak in, in 
the best to come. He will speak the time to come. In Jesus' mighty name. I pray, Lord, that you rebuke the devourer for the Father of the sin. I pray that it will bear fruit, and much fruit, that you be glorified there. In Jesus' blessed name, I thank you, Father. Thank you.